YouTube frogs. Hi. We are in front of the spiral abyss once again. Now, when I'm in front of the spiral abyss, you know one of two things that may be about to happen. Either I'm doing the spiral abyss or I'm conducting the counter review. Now, you guys may have seen the title of this one. This is a special one. It's a count review number 20, and it is a signifying that I have completed 20 in video form through my channel. So from 21 onwards, depending on what we do, it'll be a mixture of whatever the hell. So who's so special? Honestly, for a counter view number 20, it didn't really feel fair without going through. Can you guess it? That's right. If I remove the wide people blankets, my count. Wow, so insane. Wow, how did you guys know? And you guys, did you guys really think it was going to be anyone else's account other than my account? <laughs> Oh, my Twitch chat is just, they are, yeah, they're not really excited for this one. <laughs> not really excited for this one. <laughs> so I really thought about doing Miss Dawn's account, which is my fiance. However, I think we have taken a look at some point, but not on video. So maybe she may return at some other point. Who knows? But for now, I think it is very simple because right now she is currently busy so it's not really easy to, for me to coordinate with her she's very busy so youtube frogs i'm gonna go over with you today alongside my twitch chat of what my account looks like the youtube frogs you guys haven't really seen me besides my six month video where i went and was like what a Genshin account looks like after six months of playing or whatever the hell, right? This one, I wanted to put in review cycle and go through my character the same way that you may have seen in, for example, Miss Dishes or Mr. Envy's video. So you guys know that I have been 36 star in the abyss since about a month and a half into the game. If not something, I don't, I don't fully remember. Maybe it was two months or something yeah, like that. I have a very old like floor 12 or something like that. That was the very first time that I cleared 36 stars in the abyss. And I have been ever since. So what's important when they're taking a look at this? My character roster. Yes. So in order to prepare for this type of video, I have prepared proper or decently proper artifact builds for certain characters that I generally use. Okay, so this is my progress and what you're going to be seeing when you go through like this is a artifact progress from 1.5 months. Sorry, 1.5 years. You know, my, my Twitch chat is just going to say that I'm flexing this entire time. I'm not. Okay, I'm not. All I'm going to explain to you is certain characters, how their builds are, what can be improved and what I would like to see. That's all that you guys have like a rough understanding of like what you can potentially aim for maybe. Okay. By the way, if you guys are ever worried about specific build guides for specific characters, check first to see if I have a dedicated guide for them. A lot of these forces I don't, but for the, for the Fizers, I mostly do. Okay? Okay. So, you guys know that I have every single character in the game. Without further ado, let's begin this one with Kaching, shall we? Now, here's the thing. My Kaching has gone under a lot of changes. She has gone through phases where i've used her a bunch phases where she's gone been on noblesse gear or whatever the hell now she's currently you may have seen that she's currently on 1065 defense okay i get it all right okay stop don't bully me okay so for this particular build i've decided to opt for the primordial jade cutter now here's a usual problem with running jade cutter and kaching so kaching as you guys may or may not know her ascension four gives her 15% increased crit rate after she uses her burst. What this means is that she can run 85 crit, and that's essentially that she's 100% crit, right? Now with Jade Cutter, this actually satisfies a lot of her crit rate. So usually most builds don't need that much crit rate from the artifact substats. Mine is C6, obviously, and she is level eight talents across the board. I have not ever crowned anyone in my roster. The highest levels that I have are level nine. I have very few level nines. Her artifacts are actually running for Thunder Soother. Now here's the thing. This is her mask. When it comes to Thunder Soother pieces, I don't have a crit damage mask. I don't. There's, it's not possible. So I'm forced to use a crit rate mask. Now, if you can do some simple math, you can see that crit rate here is 31.1. The weapon gives 44 crit rate. So with just these two, she is plus 75 crit. Her base crit rate is 5%. So I'm already technically at 80% with a crit rate mask. However, 
My pieces aren't full crit damage, okay? <laughs> All right, YouTube frogs, listen. I'm gonna warn you right now. Close your eyes if you need to, okay? You can skip this part if you don't wanna see what this Kaching looks like. It's fine, don't mind, okay? This is what my current Kaching's artifacts look like. So this is what I farmed recently uh, when I was actually farming for Yaimiko. 11.3 crit, 20 crit damage, and 12% 12 12 recharge. So this is a 43 value with additional recharge hit. I really like this piece. It's very hard to switch out of this piece. High roll crit rate, decent roll crit damage, right? So this is 3.9, 3.9, 3.5. Uh, this is average of like 6.6-ish, and recharge is 6.15 average. Feather. This one's okay. This one's a low roll. You can clearly see that this was meant to be a 1020 piece, but a low roll. So the crit is 8.6, the crit damage is 18.7. So it's about like 37. It's not that bad. Off piece. I don't actually have that many good attack percent time pieces. I don't. And this one is not even 40 crit value for an off piece. You, you'd usually imagine like for an off piece set that is not on the set bonus, it'd usually be like extremely good. I don't have that many great ones, so I'm currently using this one. Goblet. You guys may be surprised, but honestly, this one I've had since the very beginning of the game. I have not farmed Thunder Soother for that much. This artifact I got way, way, way back. Way, way, way back. Probably in the first month or two of the game. So I've had this artifact for literally 90% of my Genshin career, okay? So this particular build, if I'm running Primordial Jade Cutter, looks like this. The crit rate is overcapped. I know, I know, the crit rate is overcapped. There's nothing I can do with the current build. It's completely overcapped. However, in usual situations, I actually would be running her with the R5 Misplitter Reforged. So if I were to use the Misplitter in this particular case, then my stats would look like this, and it would be a lot more balanced. Plus 15 crit would give me 76, okay? I just want you guys to know that I'm using this particular build with for Thunder Soother. Okay. Okay. All right. So that is Kaching. Yes. Which chat? Which character would you like to see next that I prepared for this? We're going to go through a lot of my characters and what they ended up with after 1.5 years. <laughs> I see someone say get Raiden over with. Nah, I'll save Raiden for later. Raiden is a very, very, very strong build. How about this? Most recently, let's do Yai Miko and Ayato. How about that? Okay. We'll go through Yai Miko after Ayato because you need to see something that's a little bit more relatable. Okay. So, my Ayato is not the strongest. He's running his Haran Gepakaputsu, right? Okay, there's nothing super special about this. Level 6 talents, he's Constellation 0, he's on 4 Gladiator. He doesn't have the most insane stats. I promise you these are not the most insane stats. You guys have seen it in the video, okay? In my, in my, uh, in my Ayato guide, I literally have not changed any of the pieces. I've actually removed some pieces because I don't really use him that much. He's a great character, but he doesn't really need super insane artifacts. Look! Come on, you guys have pieces like this. You can't tell me these pieces. You, okay, literally, look at this piece. You guys have pieces like this, right? Yeah, you guys have pieces like this and maybe pieces like this. Okay, this one high rolled on recharge, but still, you might have pieces like this too. All right, okay. Most relatable artifact that you'll probably see in this, in this video. <laughs> Besides my Crimson Witch pieces that you'll see later, this is probably one of my most relatable pieces. Probably one of my weaker pieces. Honestly, right now, I don't know when the, the Strongbox video is, but this is gonna spoil the Strongbox video because I'm actually looking for a better attack percent in the Strongbox. But anyways, moving on. See, it's not that good, right? Chat, look at these pieces and tell me with a straight face that they're just, they're just good. They're not great, they're not amazing, they're not super insane, they're just good, okay? What do you what do you mean Pepe W? Quote the Ah Alright. See? They're just good. And this piece is not super insane. Alright? Okay, it actually is kind of insane. Alright, this one is decent. This, this is quite good. This one's quite good for a gladiator. For a gladiator mass is quite good. Quite good. Okay. Yeah, they're they're quite good. So with these artifact stats, he is on a 44 crit, 130 crit damage build. If you guys do the estimated crit value build for this particular build, we have about a 1.55. Not that bad. 1.56, 1.55, okay? 
That's okay. Those current stats look like this, 8210. Come on, you guys have seen my flux video. This is not any different. This is actually worse than the flux videos that we've seen. So what can I improve on for this Ayato build? Honestly, I'm okay with him at this point. If you wanted to make Ayato stronger, the only thing that he would really benefit from here is more attack percent and more crit damage. I would keep the energy recharge just like this, right? He already has a hydro damage cup. Crit rate is already 80. You don't really need to go over 80. You can, not necessary. 80 is fine. Crit damage can be anywhere higher than this, 210, 225, whatever it is, and attack can be higher. Okay, only improvements for this Ayato for me would be higher crit damage and higher attack. Yai Miko! If you guys have seen my Yai Miko, you guys do know that she is Constellation 6 and she does have Kagura's Verity at R5. Okay, so you guys, if you guys have seen my Yai Miko video, there's a lot of different ways that you can build Yai Miko. Getting the talents out of the way, she's only level 6 talents. I actually need to level 8 this one or level 9 it depending on whatever I want. But yeah. So you guys know that for Yai Miko, she has a lot of different artifacts. But since I am running R5 Kagura's Verity, I am getting 72% elemental skill damage and 24% elemental damage bonus. So this combines for 96%, which is essentially electro damage for her. That means that an electro goblet is still good. However, running two attack percent pieces might do better long term, which is currently what I have here. So my current settled build is running two attack percent sets for 36% attack and maintaining the Electro Goblet. Because right now I am reaching way beyond 96% here plus 46% on the Goblet gives me 142% Electro damage bonus, about. My attack percent is going to be lacking if I do Thundering Fury here. So I actually want attack percent, okay? So when am I running? Let me just show you the stats first so we get it out of the way. 2.3k attack, not super insane, but it's pretty good, I would say. 90 crit with 226 crit damage. You guys may be wondering, ha, streamer, your Yai Miko's recharge sucks. You know, man, if you guys have seen my Yai Miko, you know that I need god f all recharge. I press my elemental skill three times and I AFK and things just die. I literally don't need to play the game, okay? Like, I, I don't need recharge on her. Okay, stats. This is a 1.71 plus 65 crit plus 110 crit damage. So I would say it's, it's, it's very good, okay? I'm, I'm gonna be honest here. I'm not gonna say it's pretty good. It's very good. It's a very good build. And honestly, it's very hard to achieve this level of build, okay? So the stats to make a 1.7 build. This mask, a very good distribution of stats, has two extra attack percent rolls, crit rate is 6.6, .6, crit damage 220. So it's a 1.2.2 two two build. It's a four line start. Perfect piece. Okay, this one is kind of cringe. Because <laughs> she even uses Elemental Mastery. You guys know one of, her one of her passive talents converts EM into more damage. So, yeah. This one is a 43.5 uh, with an extra roll into EM. Time piece. Come on. That's... This is the probably the weakest piece for her. Probably the weakest piece. About what you would expect. It's about 40. This is an off-piece Electro Damage Goblet. If I wanted to switch with Kaching, she could boost her crit damage a little bit more. Finally, the mask. Just standard Shimanawa's mask. Found more elemental mastery pieces because she does scale slightly off of it with her A4. Okay. All right, YouTube Frost, you guys are going to get Pepe Ws from my Twitch chat probably the entire night because my builds are generally very high end. <laughs> I just want you guys to know that like you guys can, you know, use these as like kind of like idle builds, right? Like, builds that you can eventually aim for, maybe? I don't know. But yeah, so for this particular Yai Miko build, I honestly don't need to increase anything. I have plus zero defense. So my artifacts give me nearly a very high, like, stat distribution. So I can't really increase the value of this unless I go more attack or more crit damage. So Yai Miko is basically done, I would say. Okay? All right, so those two characters are done, chat. Who do we go for next? You guys have seen very OP builds from me. I'm gonna get this out of the way because some of you guys are gonna ask, but I'm gonna just drop by Ito really quick just to say, don't worry about him. He is undergoing, he is having a dream right now and he's undergoing a metamorphosis. So when the time comes, we will return back and he will look great, okay? 
You know, you guys are laughing. You guys are laughing saying that he's on a four-star goblet. But if you guys know, you guys know. He may be a four-star goblet. But the reason why he's on a four-star goblet is because it had to force an onset piece. Okay? Because of this particular piece right here. I cannot deny this 49 piece. It is very, very hard to remove this piece right now. I would need a very good piece to remove this. So even with a four-star goblet, my stats are still really fucking insane. So it's okay. Anyways, you guys don't need to worry about Ito. Because those of you who know, who know. But we're not going to discuss. Okay? If you guys don't know, you'll definitely figure it out in due time. Okay? I saw a wide people happy Klee. Ah. You know? Klee, I think, was one of the first characters that I c 6 And the reason was because she is just so cute. I have her on her Dodoko Tales. And the reason why that I have her on Dodoko Tales is because it, you cannot remove this weapon from her outfit. I don't care if this is a four star. I don't care if I have five star weapons. It's, it just doesn't not make sense to not use this. So here's the thing with Klee, all right? I hate the Crimson Dungeon. I have very rarely farmed for the Crimson Dungeon. So Klee has my quote best Crimson pieces at the current moment, which ironically, I actually have a bunch of HP percent. You'll notice that my Klee has almost 20,000 HP. Holy crap. Bomb. <laughs> so heavy. My Klee has 18,572 HP. All right, listen. So here's the thing. Crimson is not really a strong suit. I'm gonna be honest with you. YouTube frogs, like I know you guys know, I hate Crimson with a passion. So this is the best that I could squeeze out for her. 1.6. It's it's a little under 1.6, but honestly, it's as best as we can do, okay? Her Crimson Witch artifacts aren't the greatest, right? This one's actually really good, right? It's a 33. Um, this piece is actually more for Hotel, but it's honestly like, you know, one of the highest value pieces that I have for Crimson. This piece is I got really lucky with, 35. I have to use an on set that doesn't even have crit rate on it. Listen, we gotta make do, okay? Let me show you what my crimson masks look like. I have two. The first one is the current one that she's using. Oh no, she's not using this one because she has to use crit rate. But if I were to put her on Lost Prayer, then I would be using this. I only have two masks right now. Bro. Look at this sack of garbage. These are the only two pieces that I have. They're both crit damage. This is the first one that I've ever had that I rolled. I, dude, this is the piece that I've had for six months. Okay, I had to use this piece for six months. I only got this piece later when I refarmed Crimson down the line. When I first farmed Crimson for Klee, it was this piece that I had to use. Oh God. You know, if I if I use this piece, look at her HP. God damn, dude, please save me. Oh, oh god. All right, let's give her back to her gladiator piece. So she's going to be using this one for the most part. These are what her stats look like. A standard 62.9, 148, right? So if I had Lost Prayer, then I'd be using a crit damage mask. Lost Prayer would be about 7,200, right? If I had any crit rate or crit damage weapon, I'd be around 7,200. So this is this is fairly solid for a non-crit based weapon. It's a 1.5. It's not great, not amazing, but it, it does it does the job. Okay. All right. We've gotten through a good good chunk of characters. Let's finish off the pyro characters, shall we? Let's go to Hu Tao next. Because we just did Klee, who had four crimson. Let's move to Hu Tao. So I don't have many crimson witch pieces. You guys know this. Because I don't have many crimson. That means a lot of my characters actually use the four-piece Shimanawas, even though it's not super optimal. So my Hutao, you may notice, has very low max HP, but she does have very high elemental mastery. From this, you can immediately glance that I probably am using an elemental mastery timepiece. So she's running her signature, Staff of Homa, R590. She has Constellation 6. Her talents R8, Triple 8. She has four Shimanawas. So... Her max HP usually, if you guys uh, watch my hotel guide, right? If you're at about 30k HP, which you should be with Staff of Homa, running an Elemental Mastery timepiece is more value for her Vaporizes, right? So obviously, since I'm running four-piece Shimanawas, I'm not running four-piece Crimson, which means I don't get the Vaporize Melt bonus from Crimson. The reason why I'm using Shimanawas is because the artifact quality on this set is higher, okay? 
I would much rather be using four crimson end game, but man, I cannot be asked to farm that dungeon. That dungeon is so miserable. And I know, I'm sure a lot of you guys can vibe with that, right? Some of you guys are running four piece Shimanawa just because you have better artifact pieces, okay? So, with the staff of Homa R5, with her ascension stat, this is what my hotel looks like. So, you two frogs, you may be wondering, what the hell? Why is your crit rate to crit damage ratio one to seven? Constellation six is really easy to proc. And usually, when I proc Constellation six, things die within a single rotation of C6. You guys don't know what C6 does, by the way. C6, when she is within lethal range, right? Below 25% or within lethal range, her crit rate is increased by 100%. Right, this obvious this can only occur every 60 seconds though, but I only I only need like a couple rotations of it. Artifacts. These are the artifact details. She's running a lot of crit damage, elemental mastery, a little bit of recharge, and power damage bonus. So you guys are actually looking at not my best Shimanawa pieces, which we will get to in just a moment. Heh. I know you guys, my Twitch frogs know exactly who has my best Shimanawa pieces. So yeah, this build is about a one, about a 1.55, but the value is much higher because I have C6, so. Running through my artifacts, just standard, standard pieces, right? These are actually, like, not the best ones. This one's a really good elemental mastery time piece, which is why I want to use this. Uh, power damage, power damage go, bonus goblet. I actually don't have very good power damage bonus goblets, so there's that. This one's only 26 value. You would have thought off, off piece would have been good. Not that good. And then the the mask. So my Hu Tao is like, she's, she's like good, you know? She only looks super strong because she's doing her crit damage, but that's at the expense of crit rate. So it's more of a kind of a, it, it's like, it, it's like a, like a handicapped build, right? It's not like an actual build you can do on other characters. So to show you guys, but, or to, to describe to you guys what you guys should be aiming for for your Hu Tao. If you, most of you guys won't be running a C6, so. Most of you guys, I'd be recommending you do the standard 70 to 200 with any arbitrary amount of recharge alongside the similar amount. Anywhere between 30 to 35k HP is really good. Elemental Mastery, anywhere between 100 to 300 is good. Okay, that's for that's that's for Hotel. All right, I don't use Deluke. So, yo, Mia, one of my most favorite characters to use. I love auto attack playstyle. I love bow characters and just tapping it left click. It's a really satisfying build for me. Um, Yoimiya, a lot of people, you know, when she first released, a lot of people didn't really like her because she was only single target. You know, everything was AOE focused. People didn't really enjoy her. But I, I really, I really enjoy. She's such a happy character. Um, she makes everyone smile. I need to level 90 her. I will level 90 her eventually. Right now, she's still level 80 though. She is one of the rare characters where I did not go for any constellations, but I did R5 her weapon. So, yeah. All right. My Yoimiya is running a four-piece Shimanawa set. Four-piece Crimson is more valuable, but my artifact quality, as you will soon see, is extremely good for this Shimanawa's piece, okay? And to mention, because you guys are going to complain about it in the YouTube video, because Thundering Pulse grants me 80% normal attack damage here, and she also gains passive pyro damage bonus, you can opt for an attack percent goblet, which you now see is a 48 piece. So depending on what type of build you run, you can run either an attack or pyro. I explained this in my Yoimiya guide. I run an attack because my pyro goblets are doo-doo, okay? So now that you've seen this piece, Let's go ahead through the other artifacts. She is level eight auto attack. Eventually I'll level nine her auto attack. You guys know that she's constellation zero. So first artifact, this flower. Wow. Shimanawa's pieces, man. 32.6 crit damage. Feather, 37 crit damage. Do you see where I'm going with this YouTube frogs? Time piece, not the greatest. My time pieces have always suffered, but still this one is a 30. And we will take anything above 30. We'll take anything above 30. You've already seen the goblet and then her mask. So this one was a very, very minesweeper piece. We dodged defense, HP, defense all but once. 
You notice the HP here is 568. That means I rolled one time in the HP, so this could have been a 40 crit damage piece. She is a 1.77 build. Okay. With our 590 Thunder Impulse at level 80, 70 to 70. She has just about 200% attack. She also has 270 crit damage. Pyro damage bonus is offsetted by the weapon, which grants 80%, as well as her passive talent, which grants 20% more. She's about a plus 100% on the power damage bonus. Yeah, that's Yoimiya. Mia. Very nice. All right, how should we do this next? Let's look at Jean really quick and my progress on Jean. Artifacts, four of your descent, which is what I do for scrolling. Uh, you can do four no bless. You can do two viewers as do gladiator. There's a lot of different builds. You can even do two viewers and two bloodstained. I choose my gene as a burst rotator. So I do just Q spam on my gene. You can do a physical oriented build if you want. Uh, you can do a mixed build if you want. Any of those are perfectly fine. Do whatever you need to do. This is just what my gene looks like. All right. She's constellation six, obviously. Her stats, pretty good. Pretty good. So her, she, she is currently running. Uh, I don't think I need to go through... I can go through these pieces pretty quick. But generally, she's running an energy recharge, uh, a Nemo damage bonus goblet, and then a crit damage mask. This crit damage mask is f***ing cracked. This one is cracked the moon, though. I don't know where and what hell I got this one, but I don't know... Yeah, this one is disgusting. Okay? So, with this particular build, and because of Jade Cutter at R180, pretty good. Fairly, I'm fairly satisfied with this gene build. It's well balanced, right? Has a Nemo damage bonus. Has crit rate, crit damage. Uh, 85, 195. Has good recharge as well to rotate burst. Her attack is supplemented by Jade Cutter. So this is attack with Jade Cutter. I think it's really nice. Fairly fine. So if I got this, if I used, I'll just show you really quick. If I use a level 90 Jade Cutter, then you'd be seeing this. So, all right. That is Jean. Jean is one character that honestly, will always be useful, especially as you get more constellations for her. Her fall damage utility, her cleansing off of her burst, attack speed with C2, damage reduction with higher constellations. She's definitely a character that you can always slot in and she'll always perform very well and you will always thank her for saving your team's life. Okay? Okay. Kazuwa, nothing special here. My Kazuwa has been 1050 EM for since the beginning of time. Freedom Sworn, he is a pure Elemental Mastery build with Gear Death and Venera. He is purely buff based. All right, so nothing special here. Elemental Mastery, Elemental Mastery, Elemental Mastery. 107 Elemental Mastery on this substat here. 70 Elemental Mastery on this one. So, yeah, I mean, he's literally pure EM. Nothing, nothing really to like write home about. All right, so that's the Anemo characters, really. Oh, we can... So, sh sh Venti is like, whatever. Venti kind of just... I use whenever. I would usually trade artifacts between Kazuwa for pure EM, or I would run Jean's build. So, if you guys notice in my recent Venti guide, I did... I just use artifacts from whatever. So, like, it's not because I don't use Venti. It's just I don't have that many Viridus and Pieces. I prefer uh, Kazuwa over Venti in most situations. Okay. So yeah, you can just imagine Venti would either be a pure EM swirler or he would be a skill and burst based damage dealer. So it's fine. It's not that I don't like Venti. It's just Venti is only used in particular situations, okay? Okay. All right. Xiao. I have put more dedicated Xiao artifacts because I feel like Xiao, he's definitely one of those characters that's harder to build. We obviously have a more dedicated set to him right now, which is the Vermilion set. Uh, if you guys know in that dungeon. Um, but right now, I don't really use Xiao that much. However, I do feel like I should showcase him in a good light because his artifacts are typically very restricted. So I put like, you know, pretty pretty solid artifacts on him. So he's currently running his signature, Jade Spear. And the reason why... So the thing about Xiao is that he's really interesting. Xiao is one of those only characters who actually, in his kit gets stronger the longer he's on the field. If you guys know, his Ascension 1 passive, while he's under the effects of his burst, he gains damage, and he does maximum damage at the tail end of his burst, right? So he's the only character who does this. I don't think we have any other character who increases damage and does the most at the very end. A lot of characters just have the maximum amount of damage when they activate whatever skill that they're using. Which means that Jade Spear is very selectively just for him, if that makes sense. Eula, 
Sure. Yula is a little different because she is stack based. However, Xiao is literally just time based. Does that make sense? So if you just activated Xiao's burst and you did absolutely nothing, you would be at his strongest point at the end of his burst. Does that make sense? You guys are giving me like decent examples, but remember those characters all require you to do something to get the damage bonus. Xiao is the only one where you can just sit still and he still gets stronger until the very last second. Okay. So with that being said, the Jade Winged Spear is actually purely just for him because most characters can't actually utilize the maximum value from Jade Spear because they get their bonus or they want to get their bonus right when they activate their burst. Xiao is the only one who actually uses the full value of the Jade Winged Spear. So it's why it's a signature weapon. A lot of you guys might not understand this nuance and might just use Jade Spear as a random five star weapon, but this is an explanation as to why this particular spear is his signature weapon. Okay, cool. Pog. Decent artifacts. Good piece. Standard 1020 piece. I don't know when I rolled this, but I have a 40 crit value piece here with an extra roll in the defense. It's like, okay. This timepiece, it's just 30. It's just a standard timepiece. Goblet, pretty good. I would say that it's just missing a roll. It's just flat HP here. And then the mask is good. Great. I would, excellent. <laughs> high roll, double high roll, 6.5 double here. 3.5 average crit rate roll and a high roll attack. Yeah, this is an excellent piece. Okay, so that's Xiao. Agree? All right, so we've gotten over a decent amount of characters. We've gotten over my Kaching, my Animo characters mostly that, uh, that I use. Uh, we've gone over our Pyro characters. We have not gone into my Cryo characters. We went over Ayato and uh, Yaimiko. We still have Kokomi, Raiden Shogun, Albedo, Shenhe, Zhongli, Yula, Ganyu, Tartag, Ayaka, Mona, uh, Albedo. We're already suscaged over Ito. Noel, actually. I'm going to go over Noel because Noel actually uses the same artifacts that my uh, Ito does. But we're gonna take a little bit of a different detour and go over the recent supports. Because I wanna showcase what my end game support characters look like. Yunjin. I like Yunjin a lot. I actually really like the features that they added in the game with Shenhe and Yunjin because it allows certain characters to pop off even more than they usually do. So my Yunjin is C6. She is 166 talents. So this is a this is a point of debate. I personally run for Husk for maximum defense. However, it is perfectly fine to run for Noblesse because her buff is in her burst. Two Husk, two Recharge, doesn't matter. You can run whatever you want. I just decide to run for Husk because it maximizes her defense. And her buff is from her defense, right? So the math behind for Noblesse and for Husk, I'm not really sure what the math is, whether 20% on your DPS is worth or more defense on Yunjin is worth. Who knows? I haven't really done the math on it. But I run this in particular because I have the artifact set up for this. So Yunjin is one of those characters that I personally run Favonius Lance, but you can run Deathmatch. I think a lot of you guys probably run Deathmatch on Yunjin because it grants her a crit rate and it's the only weapon that grants defense percent. Agree? But yeah, so either either you guys run de defense or Favonius Lance. I personally prefer Favonius Lance. I really, really love the Favonius Lance or the Favonius weapons in general. Because the recharge, the AoE recharge funneling is super, super valuable when you're constantly rotating characters. So I just really like Favonius Lance and that's what she uses. All right, so now that you know that I have Favonius Lance and... Oh, wait, we should get into the artifacts, huh? Before I show the stats. All right. So, these are my Husk of Opulent Dreams pieces for Yunjin. You'll notice they are relatively high quality. I actually farmed this dungeon for a decent amount of time. And I actually have a lot of Husk pieces that I generally use across multiple characters. You can see that Noel uses one set and then Goro also uses one set. So, we have Husk 1, Husk 2, 40. No defense on this one. This piece is an off piece because of the crit rate, crit damage. It is about a 46 piece or a 45 piece. Um, in fact, I not only have this piece, but I also have this piece, which is on Albedo. So these are identical and interchangeable. This one just high rolled harder. 
Defense on this piece, it was on the set. I had to make it work. It is what it is. And finally, on set. I got really lucky with this one, I think. This one rolled relatively well for an on set defense husk piece. Has high crit rate to satisfy a zero crit, uh, like a no, no crit main stat. So with these stats, she has 47 crit rate, 82 crit damage without a crit mask. So with a crit mask, either this would be 77, 78 crit, or this crit damage would be like 140. That count. 2.1k defense, 52, 132 with 153, 153 recharge. I like it. I don't think I'll change Yunjin. If if ever. Depending on if I get better artifacts or something. So. Uh, recharge with 27.9% and her substats. 150 is almost always a good rotator for 60 energy cost. So. She typically can self-funnel herself, but sometimes she has a little bit of a problem. Generally, I would say this is okay, though. Okay. All right, moving on to another ammo-based character, Shen He. Calamity Queller, Shen He. She is 166 talents as well. Constellation 0. Her artifacts are for Noblesse. So I run for Noblesse on my Shen He because I don't really have enough attack attack percent pieces because my Yai Miko uses a full set. So I've gone with for Noblesse as a pure buffer. Right? She's running Calamity Queller. She has 3,000 attack. So if I ran double two-piece attack percent for 36% attack, then my attack percent would be like 3.3k or something. Okay? So yeah. Um, oh, wait. I should go back really quick to explain to you guys. So when it comes to Yunjin, you may ask, why am I building additional crit rate crit damage? So Yunjin's main purpose is defense. Right? However, you can only do so much defense. Once you have defense main stat on your triple main stat pieces, you can't get main stat defense. I mean, you can't get defense substat. It's not possible. So instead of opting for the additional stats that you'd be opting for beyond the recharge, you really can only go for more crit rate and crit damage, right? At the end of the day, your supports still can do damage by themselves. But yeah, I just want to explain that really quick. Your Yunjin's out there. All I would expect to have is high defense and high recharge. That's it. Okay? Because her personal crit rate, crit damage does not matter for her buff. All right. Back to Shenhe. So, these are my, what, Shen, my, what my Shenhe stats look like. You can see they're very, very similar to my Yunjin stats. She, they both have around 50 crit. They're both hovering around 128 crit damage. This is what I could squeeze out from their substats. Shen He's recharge is lower than I would like. So her burst is on an 80 cost. However, it's not what gives her the buff, right? Shen He's buff is on her elemental skill. So you technically don't need recharge if you're going for just pure buff build, okay? In my particular case, I also don't have an energy recharge weapon. I'm using Calamity Caller for the pure attack percent. So Artifacts should be no surprise here. Well, I mean... They are very good. <laughs> they are really good. But yeah. So just find recharge substat with attack percent. This one has 10% attack alongside crit rate crit damage. This one's attack percent with 17 recharge. I think you guys recognize this piece. This was one of my only attack percent time piece on Noblesse. But now I'm having Shenhe use it. Attack percent goblet. Yeah, pretty good, I would say. And then finally, this one. This one I got really lucky with. So my off piece is an attack percent circlet. This is from the husk set. So you managed to roll a 10, 20 with 12 recharge. It's really hard to beat this. So yeah. With these with these artifact stats, I have 47, 78. And Shenhe is complete at 3k, 52, 128. So I can't really do any better than this. All right. Let's go on to more of the baby supports, shall we? Diona. You guys haven't seen me use Diona in a while. Agree? Diona has not changed. Diona's pure purpose is to have very high HP for her shielding and healing. To have crit rate to proc my Favonius Warbow, which I have had on her. As well as 200% recharge to circulate her burst. She literally has not changed since then. Uh, she is currently running Noblesse, and her, her pieces are HP, HP, HP. I gain all of my recharge from the substats, which I have plus 52 of as well as from the Favonius. I will never change this build from her. Unless I get arbitrarily better stats, which have HP, crit rate, and recharge, I will not change these pieces. So, she is solidified at this stage. 27,000 HP. Uh, really, really, really tanky. Good crit rate for Favonius Prox, and then 210% recharge. Yeah. Okay, next one, Bennett Boy. 
And it's strange. All right. So Bennett strange. I have changed my Bennett so many times, but right now I am running a snapped burst build. So my Bennett runs a kill of Avonia. No matter what weapon you decide to use on your Bennett, just find something that has high base attack. Bennett really only gives a sh about base attack because as you guys know, his burst is based off of his base attack. So this is 106% of the white number. Ignore the green. Green does not matter at all. So the buff is based off of this number right here. And so this number is a combination of the base of the character plus the weapon. So if you'll notice, if I change my weapon from this Akil Pavonia to something like level 20, for example, his attack goes to sh Okay. All right, let's explain a couple things about Bennett. My Bennett is C6. And I might get comments about like, wow, you're such a loser. You C6 your Bennett. Honestly, I think... The losers are the people who still complain about people complaining about c 6 Bennett. Those are the real losers. Just play the goddamn game. Holy sh**. I have c 6 him for about a year and a half. I have made pyro base builds on YouTube. I have had a lot of fun with c 6 Bennett that I otherwise wouldn't have. The only thing that I suffer with is the national comp and uh, buffing Eula and Razor. That is literally about it. I want to let you guys know that most people, I would still recommend C5 Bennett. But if you do have C6 Bennett, or if you see someone have C6 Bennett, let them be. Leave them alone. Shut the f up. Jesus Christ. The most important thing is why do you care? That That is my little mini rant about C6 Bennett because I still see to this day, May 2022, people cannot get over the fact that there's still the divide between C6 and C5 Bennett. Just do what you want to do. It really doesn't matter. All right, level 11 uh, thing, uh, noblesse. So my current Bennett, pretty pretty like decent. So he is run 70, 78 right now with 51.8% recharge. This piece, standard 1020. HP percent actually works for Bennett because he, his healing is scaled off of Bennett's own max HP. So you guys remember this piece? Eh. Who knows where this piece came from? Any Strongbox watchers? <laughs> I have finally gotten an energy recharge piece and Bennett takes it. Bennett is a staple. For the comps that he buffs, I want him to also be able to do a significant amount of damage because his burst actually, you know, is a nice 50k nuke. So, yeah. Power damage bonus goblet with HP percent and then crit rate mask. Just standard stuff. So, I alternate sometimes. I want to mention this for my YouTube frogs. There are like multiple ways you can build Bennett. I would say that having energy recharge on the timepiece is necessary if you don't have high recharge because you want him to rotate his burst, right? His goblet can be anything, really. You can do pyro damage bonus. You can do HP percent for healing. You can even do attack percent if you don't have anything else. It doesn't really matter, okay? His mask can be anything. You can do crit rate. You can do healing bonus. You can do HP percent. You can do attack percent if you really want to. Bennett, you you can place whatever the hell you want on him. Because at the end of the day, he does three things. He heals you off of his max HP, and he buffs base attack. Okay, that was just two things. I don't know why I thought of the third thing. What what else does he do besides that? Cleanse? Oh, well, Cleanse is not based off of his stuff. I don't know why I said three things. But I was thinking of three things, but I only said two. But yeah, I mean, his max HP... Oh, he does damage. I guess that's fine. That's fine. And his Eon's on a really low cooldown, so. If you guys run HP percent, I'll just show you what it looks like, by the way. Uh, if you run HP percent, I would actually, like, I only have so many HP percent pieces, uh, but I would probably steal Tomas. I don't want to steal Tomas right now, so I'm just going to use, do I have any other HP percent? Uh, I'll just take Barbara's for now. If you do run HP percent, you'll notice that my HP increased by 5,000. Whatever. If you want him to be like this, then he'll be a healer, he'll be an attack buffer, and he does a decent amount of damage with good recharge. So. Okay, that's Bennett. Bennett is a rather unique character in the way that he builds. I think that anyone in chat can agree that he uses a lot of stats that other characters would not really use in a single character, right? All right, more support characters. Xing Chou, Water Boy. So prior to Inazuma, prior to the Raiden Shogun, he would only be using Sacrificial Sword, correct? Now... If you are running him in a national composition, you can instead change your Sacrificial Sword to something more damage-based, like Lion's Roar, 
or any anything. Anything that does damage. The reason is because Sacrificial Sword is usually to assist his recharge problems. But if you're running him on a national comp with Raiden Shogun Battery, Raiden acts as the reset, right? Raiden Shogun acts as that extra energy to funnel into him. So with that consideration, if you want him to do that, yeah. I keep mine on Sacrificial Sword because I personally use Xing Cho as a pyro enabler. So for my Yoimiya or for my Hu Tao, I don't run him with Raiden Shogun. So I want Sacrificial Sword. Oh yeah, or Jade Cutter. That's true. Best in slot currently is four piece emblem. You guys know this. Uh, other alternatives, two piece hydro, two piece noblesse, the standard ones. Uh, I actually don't have a guide on like any of the four star characters. So like any of the information you're only gonna be getting here or in account reviews, right? So four piece emblem is his best because he is pure uh, burst damage dealer. Constellation six, he has a uh, level 11 talents. Probably one of my best build supports. These stats are crazy good. This is a 1.72 Xing Chou build. I have let him be on this particular build because he is just really necessary when it comes to outputting, even when it comes for like challenges that I would do. So he's running a very, very high quality emblem pieces. Not only that, but I have farmed so much emblem that yes, my Raiden Shogun, who also uses four piece emblem, is a better build than this. Anyways, so these pieces, 1020. Uh, 335 off piece with 1015 with 11 recharge onset hydro goblet with 31 and the mass with 31 crit damage stats 65.7 170 186.9 recharge i think this is you can't really do you can only really squeeze out a little bit more crit rate or something but like this is extremely high end i want you guys to know that i would only expect your xing chiu to be 60 crit and 120 crit damage. Anything higher than that is extremely good. Recharge, 180 minimum. Usually 180 is fine, 200 is excellent, 225 is guaranteed your burst is back, okay? That is my Xing Xiao, extremely high-end build, really hard to, to improve beyond that. Xiang Ling, you know, I want to show Beidou, but unfortunately my Beidou has random pieces for the most part. I, she really deserves more. Like I want, I want all my Beidou fans out there to not be angry at me. I really want to invest more into Beidou. I just honestly, I usually alternate between Fischl and Beidou when it comes to the pieces because they are literally the exact same build. So I, I, I don't even use them that much anymore because, um, yeah. But yeah, just I just want to let you guys know that I do have artifacts for these characters, but I don't currently use them that often. Xiangling! Ah! Xiangling! You guys know Xiangling. You guys know how powerful Xiangling is, AoE-wise. You guys know what she does. You guys know that C6 or C4, at the very minimum, is extremely powerful. You guys know that she is a catch user. You know that she's a four emblem best in slot user. You know that she does so much damage. Yes, that is her. The internal cooldown ignoring burst reverse vaporized damage dealer. Insane, wow, crazy. Also, an important character in the Sukokumon Swirl Comp, which I still don't know how to do because I it's a very complicated build. And like, maybe eventually I'll try it out. Who knows? Xiaoli is part of two very important builds. Yes, there is the National Comp, right? With Bennett, Xiaoli, and Xing Xiao. There's also the, Sukok the, the Pokemon Comp, the Sukokumon Comp, okay? So, my Xiangling. Worse than my Xing Chou, but still very good. The reason is because I use Xing Chou a lot more often. So she is about a 1.5 build. I am not going to change anything about her. She's running standard good pieces. Like these pieces are like good. Still good. You guys just saw them. They're not like excellent, but they're good. Okay. With the catch, that's what we're looking at. So my crit damage could be much higher here. And my recharge is like, okay. I would say that my Xiangling takes like my mediocre emblem pieces. You guys realize that I am running emblem on a lot of characters, at least three, Raiden Shogun, Xing Chou, and Xiangling. So I am spread thin on my emblem pieces. We have farmed emblems since the beginning of time. I have a lot of pieces that I've invested in. Everyone uses some type of it. Even Mona has a four piece emblem. So I technically have 20 emblem pieces that I'm using, which is quite nuts. Yeah, I'm actually using the attack percent timepiece on Xiaoling, and the reason why I'm doing this is because of I have the catch. So, 
She can opt between an emblem or an attack percent timepiece or an energy recharge time timepiece. Um, if you're running Bennett, even more so to guarantee that she rotates. Okay? So, if you guys are noticing, these are what I would consider the end game, what you should approach for. Four emblem is best in slot for a lot of these characters. They used to have two noblesse, two crimson, or two noblesse, two elemental, which is the standard to go to. But four emblem is just the better version of those builds. Okay? Okay. You notice Xingqiu has four emblem? Xiangling has four emblem? Beidou would have four emblem? Yeah. Like all of these, all of these burst support characters will run four emblem as their best slot. Okay? Okay. Xiangling can also use elemental mastery sans. I want to mention that because I feel like a lot of you guys might be curious on what my thoughts are. You should definitely use some sort of elemental mastery, whether it's from the sands here or dragon's beam from the weapon. Either one works. Whatever you need. Okay. I know that prior to the catch, the dragon's beam was a very popular choice, and still continue. It, it still is a very popular choice on her. It works very well with the with the dragon's beam. Okay. So let's see. Those are what else. By the way, YouTube frauds, this is going to be a very, very long video. And I hope that you guys are okay with that because we're going through a lot of characters and I'm explaining a lot of information. And honestly, this video could be the go-to when it comes to like every character that I have taken a look at, if that makes sense. I'm not only giving you guys my build, but I'm also giving you like what I would expect from you guys. And it would help. It would basically summarize, right? It's like a special review. <sighs> I'm talking a lot and I'm getting very tired, but I will push through. We got a, we got a lot more to go through, okay? All right, next character, Sara. I love all the Electro characters. Sara is a buffer, but she's also a burst sub DPSer when she needs to be. So I have her elemental skill at level 11 because of her attack bonus ratio. This is also the same as Bennett, where they go up their base attack, right? She has Constellation 6. She is running four piece noblesse. And because this is because she has strict buffer, right? She is, however, using R5 Skyward Harp. Now, here's the thing I have her on R5 Skyward Harp because no one else in my current roster is using it right at this moment. Usually, she'd be on R1 Skyward Harp because the refinements don't really matter for her. But he's special to me. So I will put her on the R5 Skyward Harp. The reason why she's on the Skyward Harp is strictly because of the base attack. Another option for you to go for, Elegy for the end. This is the pure support based weapon. It works very well with her. She procs the passive relatively quickly, so it's totally fine. She only procs the passive, by the way, with her burst because her burst actually procs multiple times. So keep that in mind, okay? I use her on Skyward Heart for strictly for the attack bonus. Okay, and also, not only the attack bonus, but also the stats. She can buff attack and also deal a ton of damage and have really good recharge, yeah. Electro damage bonus, 167 recharge, 8196 with uh, with the uh, Scoured Harp. Sacrifice the attack for the recharge though. So her artifacts, relatively decent quality. Not super insane, but not super poor. Honestly, this versus this for Sara. On a good day, I'll put this on Sara and give Bennett the other one. This would push her to better looking stats, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. They both use the same stuff. Okay. Uh, Electro Damage Bonus Goblet and the Kurt Ray Mask. So, this is my Sara. For you guys, all you really need to care about is good recharge to rotate her burst because her burst gives the next active character who receives the, who gets tagged by it the buff, right? Like, I feel like a, for some reason, this has been a, like a little bit irritating. Whenever I use Sara, a lot of people are like, Mr. Streamer, you didn't get the buff. You didn't use her elemental skill. And I'm like, you forget how Sara works, right? Like, a lot of people forget that Sara's burst also buffs attack. And, like, I, 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 I like, hopefully, like, you know, yeah, okay? Like, if you, if you read what this says right here, her elemental burst, both the first hit and the additional strikes provide the same attack bonus as her elemental skill. But, like, you guys forget about that. Or, like, you guys didn't watch my Sara, like, guide video or, like, you didn't care to or like i don't know but like it's literally the same buff okay so like it is actually much more consistent to rotate her burst and to rotate her elemental skill all right who else do i want to talk about when it comes to my four star characters toma quick run through for toma uh he is my hp bot for the most part uh he is running the black tassel 
for most situations. He's on four Noblesse, one nine nine, Constellation six. Pretty good stats, even when he's 25,000 HP. So he's currently running energy recharge, HP crit rate. Honestly, if you just wanted him to be a shield bot, you could just run him energy recharge, HP, HP. Basically, consider Toma's build to be exactly the same as Diona. They both operate the same way, if that makes sense. Okay. Do I ever use him though? Oh, okay. So this is a common question that I get for Toma. Do I use him often? Yes. I use him very, very often with Yoimiya. And he's probably the only like really consistent pair with Yoimiya. Yoimiya loves his shields because his shields proc really consistently and always protect Yoimiya from interruption. So if I'm typically running a composition, I like using Yoimiya Toma with Kazuha. And yeah, so that's that's my that's my preferred use case. Yoimiya is a, a, a lovely pair with Toma. Goro, really quick. I don't know if I have my updated Goro. The only problem is I don't have enough uh, res like, like weapons. Usually if I'm running Goro, then I'm trading weapons with Diona for this. So l l just, just let that be known. Oh, sorry, I should very much mention. Ah, uh, yes, I should very much mention. Going back to the Toma thing. The reason why you run Yoimiya with Toma is because I do Mono Pyro. So I don't do a Vaporized Yoimiya usually. Because my stats are so broken, I don't need to. Anyways, I sorry, I, no one, no one cares. Ah, uh, anyway, sorry, no one cares. Um, anyway, Goro. So my Goro is actually quite, like, well balanced, I would say. So his um his burst is 80 energy cost, even though his buff is on his E. So it's like. He's a very interesting character with the way I built him. I built him in a way where like he, he has a backup plan. So two husk, two emblem is a really good middle ground I find. And optimizing for defense and recharge is what I attempted to do with his artifacts. So I'm running energy recharge, defense, and then defense. This piece is quite nice. So with this stat, he has maximized defense, insanely high recharge, and then extra stats into crit rate damage. So. This is literally just for his burst. Like, I just slam as high as possible recharge on him for that. Okay? That's my Goro. If I were to recommend if you guys were using Goro, at maximize defense, maximize recharge. You can ignore crit rate damage completely. Okay? Yeah, but you want your recharge to literally be through the moon. Oh! Alright. Four-star characters mostly complete. I guess I'll give an honorable mention to Rosaria, because Rosaria is very unique. Agree? I should showcase my Rosaria so that you guys know exactly what I would aim for. So... I use Rosaria as a support for cryo DPS or melt or freeze crit rate wise. So I've aimed for my Rosaria to be a crit rate transfer because she is unique and consistent with that aspect of her kit. Those of you who know, her Ascension 4 passive transfers up to 15% crit rate to her teammates when she casts her burst, okay? So I'm running for no bless. It's a supportive build, as you can expect. We're running plus 64.9 crit rate, resigning crit damage with decent amount of recharge. Her burst doesn't cost that much. Her burst is 60 cost. Uh, she's running death match. So you can very easily see Thunder crit rate build. So this crit rate is actually a little bit over capped. And the reason why it's over capped is due to her A1 talent. Those of you who don't know, her Ascension 1 talent, after she uses her elemental skill and it strikes the back, she gains 12% crit rate. So with this, she's actually 115 crit rate. However, a lot of cases where I use Rosaria, I actually use Favonius Lance. So if I were to use Favonius Lance, that means my crit rate would drop by 33. So with her buff, it'd be at 80% with her A1 talent, which means I'd be transferring about 12% crit, which is still good enough. So that's why I've done a middle ground where I've over capped it with the death match, but I've under capped it with Favonius. Okay? So for you guys, I don't know what type of Rosaria build you guys are aiming for, but for the most part, Rosaria's main value is for her crit rate transfer. So having high crit rate is valuable for her. Okay? Okay. Pog. And remember that because her Ascension with Talon gives her 12% crit, you can technically run 88 and be capped. All right. So those are my four-star characters. We went through Yunjin, Goro, Rosaria, Diona, Sara, Bennett, Shaoling, Xingqiu, Toma. You can view Sara's build as the same build as Fischl uh, and Beidou because they're all the same. Okay. All right. Back to the five-star character. Who should we examine first? Wow. Let's start off tame, shall we? 
Zhang Li. Really tame build. Very, very Does tame Memphis build. This wine tastes the same as I remember. Bro. But where are those who share the memory? The first thing you do after I switch to you is you fucking talk about your wine, man. Literally one second after I switch to you, you talk about your wine. <sighs> All right, man. All right, old man, let's go. Triple A talents. He's constellation six. Poor tenacity. I usually have my Zhongli on a supportive build. The reason is because I literally just use him as a shield bot. But I do give him justice. He is running my other Staff of Homa. So I am running a little bit of extra damage with the Staff of Homa here. The artifacts are a mixed build. I prefer this build. So if I was to say a build that I would settle on for Zhongli, it would be this build. I am running him on an HP percent, HP percent crit rate build. I have sacrificed the geo damage bonus and the damage from it for more shielding. I prefer this type of build just because I want him to be a little bit more tanky, okay? But you can totally run a geo damage bonus goblet if you want to. This one's actually really good, but I'm gonna run HP percent. Honestly, my geo damage bonus goblet is better, so I will switch to it now. But that's just because the stats are better, so yeah. This John Lee is um, what I would run my John Lee as. A mix of HP percent and sub DPS damage. With these stats, 71, 74. His recharge, honestly, doesn't really matter too much because his burst is 40 cost. So, all right, chat, let's go through Mona's build. Quick, quickly through Mona's build. Uh, she, I haven't used Mona in a long time, but she's still on a decently uh, well-built emblem build. This is my third emblem set that I'm showing you guys. Constellation 6, 6, 9, 11 talents. Artifact quality is okay. 64, 74 is not the greatest, but it has a job. Her total stats, 70, 124. With Wits, it would be higher crit damage. Very, 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 very high recharge. So Mona is on a unique build, and this is what I would consider the quote-unquote best build for her. Energy recharge timepiece, attack percent goblet, and crit rate mask. The reason why I run an ER timepiece and attack goblet is because of emblem granting her the burst damage bonus. So this is a very well balanced build that balances her attack percent and recharge while also maintaining the burst from this. So if you run hydro instead of attack here, you have no attack. Like you literally don't have attack. Even with attack timepiece, I barely have any attack. Uh, attack up, I barely have any attack. So you don't want to sacrifice the recharge here because then your emblem doesn't do anything for you. Okay. So that's why I run ER attack crit. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's Mona. Really quick through Mona. Let's go through Tartek because these are these are builds that I haven't really fully uh, fleshed out. So Tartek. I haven't really used that much recently, but he does have a Hydro set. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't have my best Hydro set because, well, Susuke, don't worry about it. Pepe La. He is using Polar Star, which I somehow have R5. I don't even remember when I R5'd it. I do, I literally do not remember when I r 5 this weapon. I have literally no idea, but he's R5. So there's that. Stats, 33, 147, pretty decent. Artifacts are still pretty good quality, I think. Yeah, we have a 37, a 39, 38, 39, 35, 33. The mask is kind of cope, whatever. Stats, 7,200. Could be better, obviously, but they do the job right now. He's exactly 100% attack. That's my Tartek. The reason why I don't really talk about him that much is because the artifacts are yeah, let's, let's not worry about it. Okay, cool. <sighs> Albedo. Quick through my Albedo. Old school build. His best build is still four piece husk, but I'm doing the old school two noblesse, two archaic Petra. Those of you who remember this were pre husk gamers. Yeah, this is a very OG, OG, OG build. Okay. He's running the classic Cinnabar Spindle, but I still haven't even R5'd yet. I have the materials in my inventory. I just haven't R5'd it. But yeah, I don't really use Albedo that much. But when I do, he always performs well. His stats are well distributed. A nearly clean 1 to 2 ratio on the crit rate crit damage. Recharge does not really matter for him. High defense is all I really care about. And Geo damage bonus. So uh, he's running these pieces. Defense, this is my 50 crit value on him. It switches with uh, Yunjin at some point. Geo damage bonus and then crit rate mask. So nothing special here. We're getting to the final bits. We have only Eula, Ganyu, Noel, Kokomi, Raiden, Ayaka. All right. So 
I'm gonna save Kokomi for later on because my Kokomi is actually very well built. It's just that not a build that you guys are used to seeing. Okay. Eula. R5 Broken Pines. Two Blood Stained. Two Pale Flame. Constellation 6. 6, 9, 12. One of the very few characters where I level 9 or one of their skills. Plus 3 from the from the constellations. So, Eula. She has Song of Broken Pines, which means she doesn't get crit rate or crit damage from the passive. Two Pale Flame, two Blood Stained. Honestly, my Eula artifacts aren't the best. I'm going to be honest with you guys. However, I did offer more recharge for her so that she'd pop off a little bit more. So I'll show you guys right now. These stats are not the greatest. 129% physical damage bonus, 115 recharge, 185 crit damage, and 72 crit rate. See, it's not that, it's not like amazing, right? You guys agree with me? These are not like amazing stats on Eula. If she had a crit weapon, it would obviously be much higher, but you know. Okay, so artifact details give me about a 1.6 build. Just about a 1.6 build, which is which is pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Stats. Weird pieces, honestly, but I did this for the recharge. Low roll crit damage, but would have been a 10-20 piece. Off piece. Actually, on set, but I have three blood stains, so this technically could be off piece. And then this one. I think you guys have seen this piece before. This was a this was like a, a rare three-line on set. I got this way earlier. This is one of my rare on-set physical damage bloodstained goblets that is perfect. I I've had this for about a year. A year, a year and a half-ish. Very old piece. And then the mask. 30 crit damage, 10% attack. Good balance stats. If I were to update anything on Eula, a little bit more recharge probably. That'd be about it. Even with batteries, it's still nice to have more recharge on her. Or I would just smack straight into crit damage, but it's fine. For you guys, I would recommend you guys have as high crit rate as possible. Because when it comes to her elemental burst, if you don't crit your burst, you lose like all of her damage. So, more consistent crits is bueno. Yes? Yes. Okay, chat. Time. Four decently strong builds. Noel. So I'm going to show my Noel, but I want you guys, I want the YouTube frogs to know that my Noel has the exact same set as my Ito. I only have one dedicated DPS husk set. Okay, and so I am interchangeably. They're both Claymore users. They both use the Red Horn. As you'll notice, my Noel, Red Horn. Okay, so this build is the DPS Geo build. Okay, I really like Noel. I think that she performs admirably in every single task I've ever had her do for videos. C6, she's a fucking champ. That's all I gotta say. Or Husk, Red Horn. Twitch chat, do you guys wanna see stat layout first or artifacts? Okay, we had like eight people say something in chat because I think most people are lurking. But they mostly said stats, so we'll go stats. 7222. Remember that Noel does not have a crit rate or crit damage ascension stat. So on another build, this might have been 80 crit rate or 250 crit damage. Recharge is on the lower end, but generally nowadays I run Mono Geo Noel, so it's not really a problem. Artifacts. 1.6 build. Uh, 1.54 build. So this is actually not the highest crit rate crit damage, but it's the best that we can do. I like the I like the build that I opted for here. They are well balanced stats for the husk pieces, even accounting for met rolls. So I only have one defense onset piece here. The goblet could be better, but I wanted more of the recharge. And then the mask is, I think this is the only decent crit rate mask that I have. Yeah, you guys just saw all of them. So yeah. Okay. Okay, so that's my Noel. Not like the most OP build, but definitely but definitely uh, a build that I like. I saw 1k HP. Yeah, that was uh, some other pieces. Alrighty. Ganyu. Hmm. Or Wanderer's Troop. Constellation six, level nine, normal attack. One of the few normal, one of the few level nines that I have. Signature R5 almost bow. So she has a very good level of attack. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. This time I'll show you artifacts first. Not too good, right? Not amazing, but still good. My wanderers pieces. I've been having trouble finishing out some ones, but. Like, they're, it's not, like, super broken, I would say. Right? So, yeah. 38. 37. 
rolled this in the strong box. I'm sure you guys know. I sometimes alternate between this one and this one, but I have a decent amount of elemental mastery substats, so I go with elemental mastery uh, or, or attack percent main stat here. Goblet. So here's the trick, right? You, when you guys see my Ayaka, you will understand that I can make my Ganyu stronger because I do have a better cryo damage bonus goblet than this. But that will be saved later. And then the mask. I've had a lot of trouble with the masks. Wanderer's troop crit damage masks have never been kind to me. You'll see that this one has higher crit rate, but I would like the 68 EM here. So my Ganyu is okay. I would say that she has definitely room for improvement. I want her crit rate to be a little bit higher, but it's still generally pretty good. Recharger is kind of a dead stab for Melt Ganyu. Elemental Mastery is pretty good. So I think the only thing for me to work on is a little bit more crit right here. All right, boys. Now we get into the last three. How much Melt do you want on Ganyu? So, oh yeah, yeah, so this is something I should mention. For Melt Ganyu, anywhere between 100 to 300 is always good. So after 300 EM, it's heavily diminishing. So up to 300 EM is perfectly fine for Melt Ganyu. I just do 187 right now because I want to do an attack percent. If I, I could get 300 if I did EM timepiece. Anywhere, anywhere between 100 to 300. You can go smack that for 200. It's totally fine. All right, boys. We got three characters left to wrap up this very, very long video going over all my characters for review number 20. My Kokomi. I am very proud of my Kokomi build. And she deserves the best after what she dealt with on her first release. Her signature weapon, Everlasting Moon Glow. I do want to level 90 this at some point, but she's already level 90 herself, so it's not really that big of a difference. But yeah. Four, ocean, four clam set. Constellation zero. Level six talents. So, I know a lot of you guys are not really sure what to look for when it comes to a really good Kokomi build. So Kokomi, her HP is responsible for her healing. She does not benefit from crit rate crit damage unless you're doing a meme build. She would like some recharge to rotate her burst, and she can technically use attack percent for her autos. Her autos are technically like dual scaling, if that makes sense. So, my Kokomi, I'll, t I'll show you guys the stats first because you guys won't even really understand it. So, my Kokomi is 200% HP, hitting 40,000, a little bit of attack at 50%, Perfect zero crit, zero crit damage with a healing bonus mask and 150% recharge with a hydro damage goblet. I would say it's pretty good. This is a very good amount of recharge considering I'm running HP percent timepiece. So I have zero crit substats. If we go to the artifacts, what do they look like? Zero, zero, plus 51.2, healing bonus mask, a little bit of EM, random defense, at uh, attack, and then HP percent. Yeah? So her main set artifacts. This is probably my worst one, but the reason why I choose this piece over, for example, this piece is because I actually value the recharge a lot more than the extra HP percent. Recharge goes a long way for Kokomi for her burst, and the difference between 8% HP versus 5% recharge could make the difference between activating her burst or not. So if I wanted more HP percent, then I would go with this build, but it doesn't really matter, okay? So this piece, HP and recharge. Ah. This piece rolled so well. The only thing that I would change in this piece is attack percent on the defense line. But this is basically almost a perfected substat roll with two rolls into HP, a little bit of recharge, and additional elemental mastery. So this is a perfect piece. Time piece. Only thing I'm looking for here is energy recharge. Flat HP is a awkward, but you know, well, well endowed bonus. Okay. The only other pieces I have for the clam set, I don't think I have that much. Yeah, all these are the only two. The other one's attack percent, which is the off piece. Okay. And then off piece. This was a really good one. I think this one rolled as best as it could. It low rolled a little bit in the HP, but generally it uh, uses all the stats that she needs, right? Flat HP, HP percent, energy recharge. Literally can't get better. So we, we just are focusing mainly on the recharge for the subset and HP percent. Yeah. Finally, wow. This piece, I cannot believe I rolled this. Onset healing bonus, HP percent recharge. This one was definitely a welcome sight to see for a Kokomi. The only blemish here is the flat defense roll, but, on, but besides that, it is basically perfect. It is crazy good how much HP and recharge this gives. Very, very nice. So 
Badass Becca Comey. I'm very proud of her build and uh, she is complete, I would say. Unless the only thing that she would benefit from is a even more perfect Hydro Damage Goblet here, which is not really easy to get, so. Yeah, this is what you guys should be aiming for when it comes to Kokomi artifacts. As much HP percent and recharge as you can get, you guys can totally do four-piece tenacity. For those running for a more uh, supportive build, four-piece tenacity set is perfectly fine. And for those builds for four-piece tenacity, run Thrilling Tales, okay? Alrighty, boys. The final two. So I'm gonna be showing you guys my Raiden Shogun first because I think my Ayaka is extremely high end and I can't really improve my Ayaka any more than she is. She is. So the last two builds, after that we've covered basically every single person in my roster that I generally use. Raiden Shogun. Ah, I want you guys to know right now that you guys may have seen it in a recent video, in the rerun video, but I'm showing it to you guys again. R5 Engulfing Lightning, 4-piece Emblem set, Constellation 6, 1912. Recently, I actually invested one more talent into her burst, so she's now level 12 rather than level 11. I do not have anyone crowned. I do not have anyone crowned. I have saved all my crowns. I don't crown people. Well, it's not that I don't crown people. I just, you know, no reason to crown anyone right now. Okay, so for Raiden Shogun. Hey, I will show you the artifacts first, okay? You know, this timepiece right here is the bane of my existence. I have to use an off-piece set here and use an on-set goblet because I cannot for the life of me, after many, many, many months of Inazuma being out, I have yet to find a 40 or even 35 plus crit value energy recharge emblem timepiece. I am still searching to this day. The reason is because I would like to swap out this piece, which is, you know, still very good for this piece. I would be upgrading the goblet from a 721 to a 734. That would complete my ride in Shogun build, but I've yet to get it, which is why I still try to farm for that piece. All right, so let's just show this piece right now. This one still rolled very well. This is what this one is a 39 value piece. So for now, her build is still very good. Other pieces. Another beautiful 40. This is a 40.4 piece. Very nice. Another 40. A little higher than 40, but yeah, 40. So we have a 40.4. Uh, we have a 43.6, I believe. 39. A 35.6. And then a 33. So these combined give my stat details. A 1.8. My only 1.8 character. No one else on my roster is a 1.8. This is my only 1.8 character. This brings her build. 73.168. With 258.9 recharge. So yeah. Uh, I do not have Raiden Shogun on my team. So let me do that really quick. To show you guys what the attack would look like. So while Raiden Shogun is on field. Her attack is now 2.6k. This looks a lot better. 2.6k attack. 73, 168, 60 recharge. And then 63.6 uh, electro damage bonus. Final build. Very proud of Ayaka. Recently completed her build to make it even better. The jeweler cherishes their gems. Ayaka. R5 Mist Blitter. Four Blizzard. Constellation 6. One, nine, 11, uh, 8, 9, 11 talents. Honestly, I should increase this by one, but I'll do it later. Actually, you know what? You know what? For the video. I very rarely level 9. So, I, I think I only have like 5 talents at level 9. So, Ayaka definitely deserves it. Given that my Ayaka build is nearly full complete. Yeah, this is, this is uh, more than worth it. Okay? So, my Ayaka artifacts. How about this? Let's go through her stats first and what I would change or not change. Okay. She has 2.36 attack. 2.36 attack. She is a very perfect 45.8 crit rate with double cryo and blizzard. This is 100%. Her crit damage is 247.5 and her recharge is 133. It is very hard to squeeze out more stats here. The only thing I would 
I would change is removing the defense for a little bit more recharge. A little bit more recharge. 133 is a very good amount of recharge, though, to have, and I'm very content with this currently. She rotates her first very well. So, that is my Ayaka's endgame stats. You guys who watched the Ayaka recent guide video, you guys have seen these stats, so this is not unknown to you. But I mean, if you guys are if you guys are being recommended this video and uh, you haven't seen the Ayaka guide, yeah, this is, this is the same build. So for Ayaka, honestly, anything to recommend is above 120% attack, above 200 crit damage, and above like 125 recharge. Crit rate, 40 to 45 for Blizzard, okay? Okay, so artifacts you guys see my crit damage be 247.5 and yet i don't use a crit damage circlet recently got this one so this is my final upgrade for my ayaka the only way i could get better than this piece is if it had the exact same stats but the attack was recharge or crit damage now, you guys may be wondering, those of you who haven't watched my Ayaka, you might be wondering, why am I using an attack percent? So the reason is because when you're running four piece blizzard and you're running a crit damage mask, your crit, your crit damage goes up to like 280, right? And you'll notice that with four piece blizzard, your crit damage is super fucking high, but your attack percent is dog shit low. So this is actually a better balance of stats given better substats, okay? So I actually, I want more attack percent because my crit damage is so bloody high. Heavy diminishing returns the more crit damage you have now that we're at the 250 range, right? So dropping the crit damage mask for an attack percent mask deals more damage. However, this is a risky play to do. Only do this if you have really good substats. The reason is because you lose 16% stat here. The difference between attack percent main stat and crit damage main stat is 16 because it's 62.2 here. So keep in mind that you are losing stats if you're going down. So that's why substats are important, okay? So we have this piece and then a goblet, which we have a 46 time piece, which we have a clean 40 feather. This is a piece that I sacrificed crit rate and crit damage because I wanted the recharge. So this piece can still technically improve, but it's still very good this one so this piece is very hard to change this is a extremely well balanced piece it is only 34 on the crit value however it has double recharge rolls 16.8 recharge on this is very very good so that's my ayaka my ayaka is what i would consider my most balanced character besides raiden shogun those are the two that i have viewed as my strongest characters so you guys can see here that my build is almost a 1.5 without a crit damage mask it's very good but I think that is a solid place where we have completed a review of my account and looking at nearly all of the characters that I relatively use. So, YouTube frogs, I hope you guys enjoy this very long video. This is a special review to wrap up a very, not, not wrapping up, but like, you know, the 20th review of this series is going over my account and the status of my characters and going over stats that I have achieved. YouTube frogs, if you guys want to join the Twitch stream, you guys know where to find me. Otherwise, if you guys made it through the entire length of this video, I commend you. Thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you guys for always supporting. Don't forget to like and subscribe. All that juicy jazz. Good luck on your artifact grind. And as always, we'll see you guys next time. Take care.